Hello and welcome to Mark's Madness. Thank you so much for joining us. Joined by Mark Miller as always. I'm Matt Finkel. Week 7 brought us some great games. And let's start with the game in the area. If Ohio State Michigan is the game in college football, I think Coldwater Marion Local is becoming the game in high school football, at least in our area, and it didn't disappoint. Yeah, in the state. I mean, you, you had it all. You had two undefeated teams, two returning state champions, two league rivals, uh, huge crowd, beautiful weather, 50-50 uh, drawing through the roof. I mean, you had it all, and it comes down to the last play of the game. That game really represented everything that is great about high school football, yeah. and it was decided with a 43, 44-yard field goal, yeah. which is amazing. When you yeah. think of high school kicking, we've seen problems with extra points, mm -hmm. and to make such a big field goal, Kyle McKibben in, in that spot, yeah. and everything leading up to it. You know what, let's just break it down. Okay. We're gonna jump right into the play breakdown today because we wanna show you how this game was won and lost, and it begins in the third quarter with Coldwater up 7-6. to six. Well, let's take a look at it. Here's Hemelgarn in the shotgun. He's going to find Harlemert down the right side. Just a go route. Just, uh, I'm faster than you, can turn and run with me, and the ball was right on target, and you saw a great catch. You're going to see it from ground level, give you a little better feeling of what Harlemert's looking back at. That ball's up in the lights. He dives, and there it is. Touchdown, and that put him up 14-6 um, to six at that point. And now we're going to come back later. It's 14 to 12. Marion Local going for two here. And you can see Cole Griesdorn. That was a pass. You saw the lineman there. And they were trying to find somebody to block. Nobody could. Nobody came. Griesdorn turned it up. We'll give you a, a chance here to take a look at what we're talking about. These guys right here. Take a look at those guys right there. They're looking for somebody. Looking, looking, looking. Griesdorn says, nobody's open. I'm going to have to run it. And he gets across. Actually runs right by his lineman into the end zone. So that tied it up 14-14. Now, real late in the game, I think nine and a half seconds or something. What are you going to do? Gain a few more yards, make that field goal just a little shorter. Again, Hemelgarn to Harlemert on the out. Ball was right on target. Really just a, a stop route. He turns inside. The ball's thrown to the outside shoulder, steps out of bounds. Clock is stopped. You can see there was 6.4. Enter Kyle McKibben. When we did their game against Minster earlier in the year, Mark Shine and I commented, this kid's got a heck of a leg, and sure he did. Knocked it through there, not even close. He had plenty of room. You can see the head down, end over end, and that's a beauty. That's the way it ended. Last play of the game, Coldwater wins it. Wow. So Coldwater remains undefeated, and you just can't say enough about what a great game that was. Marion Local scored when we showed them going for that, going for that two-point conversion. There was 30 seconds left, so yeah. they... Nobody had scored on the Coldwater first team defense all mm -hmm. year long. They get in and they tie it up with 30 seconds left and then the Cavs go down the field just to set up that game winning field goal. The 50-50 was $11,400 and just an amazing night. Yeah. Coldwater, you mentioned their defense, it's the number one defense in the area and, and if anybody's going to score on you it's going to be Marion Local. Great game by two great teams and I think the coaches in the state got it right. They're still number one in their divisions. Coldwater snapping Marion Local's 43-game win streak. And just like last year when Marion Local defeated Coldwater, we sat here and said we wouldn't be surprised to see either of those teams <laughs> yeah. raise the trophy Week yeah, 15 right. in Columbus. And it's I stand harder to win the MAC than it is a state championship in that league. Yeah, stand by that this season as well. Two very good teams in Division 5 and Division 6. There was another great game in the MAC too. Mm -hmm. Minster, Fort Recovery. Fort Recovery trying to stay unbeaten. Mm -hmm. And Minster got the better of them, 14-12. It's the first loss for the Indians. Yeah, we, we mentioned last week that Fort Recovery faces the toughest part of their schedule here on out. But Minster, two losses to the two teams we just looked at, Marion Local and Coldwater. Other than that, they, they have won them all. And uh, they're gaining some momentum going into the playoffs, kind of like last year. Yes. They are second in Region 26 right now. Fort Recovery is fifth in that region as we begin to take a look at where the teams are ranked. Starting to get a little picture. A little, now, little playoff yeah. picture, yeah. yeah. In the max standings, obviously, Coldwater in front. Marion Local and Fort Recovery are both 4-1 and one in the league with St. Henry and Minster at 3-2. and two. Let's go to the track now. Lima mm -hmm. Senior over Finley. Now, this game would have been a headliner on any other night, mm -hmm. except that we had Coldwater and Marion. So, yeah. Big game, both 5-1. and one. Lima Senior gets the tough win, 41-34 the final, and they, again, used big defensive plays late in the game to secure the victory. Yeah, we always talk about their offense, and it's certainly good. They put up 41 points against Finley, so that's, that's pretty good. But this was Jalen Thomas's night, man. He did it all. He scores a touchdown. He gets an interception. 17 tackles? How do you, how do you get that many? I mean, the kid was all over the field. A couple of sacks. He just played great. And, uh, you know, he pulls that defense along. We're going to see him play on Saturdays for a long, long time 
well, not a long time. He only get five years to play in college, but right. he's going to play, and he's going to play a lot. Yeah, Coach Fell seems to think that he's a Division One linebacker, and yeah. he's certainly proving him right at well, this Coach point. Coach Fell knows about Division One. He had Zach Dysert, so he understands what yes. it takes to get to the next level. Right, back at Ada. Yeah. So the Spartans are tied for third in the track now. St. John's and Central Catholic are both 4-0. But the good news for Lima Senior is they play them both starting this week with St. John's. That's right. Tough one this week. Then Clay, which you think they're going to have, they're going to win that one, and then they finish up at Central Catholic. Central Catholic was is young, and they started off stumbling against some good teams early, but they're really playing well right now. That'll be a tough one, Week Ten. Well, Lima Seniors ranked sixth in Region Six, and of course would be in the playoffs if they started today. Let's go to the WBL, Salina mm -hmm. St. Mary's, the Grand Lake rivalry, <laughs> and it's Salina coming out on top 28-21. Another great game. Game, another rebroadcast. Yeah. We really lucked out with our rebroadcast oh, games great this game, week yeah. because, yeah, this yeah. one was great. And are you surprised now, Salina over St. Mary's? Well, or Salina's played well all year. Yeah. You know, even in their couple of losses, they played well. St. Mary's have lost two in a row against Bath and now Salina. Both get, they played better in this one than they did against Bath. But, uh, you know, in, in a game like that, that rivalry thing, it can go either way. We, we saw Marion local cold water comes down to a last second field goal. So, uh, that's a good game. They both, uh, you know, St. Mary's has to bounce back because now they're thinking about getting in the playoffs. Right. WBL is gone. They got two losses, but uh, they can still do some damage. They're going to get a lot of points if they can beat Wapak in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that game had a lot of playoff implications. Mm -hmm. Salina is now third in Region 10, Division 3. St. Mary's is sixth in, in Region 10, that same yeah. region. Wapak also in that region, and I think Wapak is second. They're undefeated. Yeah. And Salina getting the game winning score there with a minute 21. That's a big win. Big and one. how about yeah. Bath? Over yeah. Van Wert, they're really starting to prove some of the people who said they were a good team right mm -hmm. because they're, they're starting to get some wins, and this is another big one. Two good wins for them. Uh, they can continue to win. How about Van Wert? Four losses by a touchdown or yeah. less, you know, or else they'd, they'd be right there yeah. too. So they're still playing well. Uh, it was a good game, but um, very, very interesting on Bath and, and see if they can sneak in there somehow. Their record's not great yet, but they're going to get some points if they win out. Well, they're up to 12th mm -hmm. in Region 12. They're in Division 4, and they gave Wapak all they could handle. Yes, they did. And then they, they got the couple wins, so now they're looking good. Mm -hmm. Wapak rolled over Defiance. It's uh, their league to lose, as we've talked about. Yeah, they got at OG this week. That'll be tough. They got St. Mary's, and that's the, you know, Coach Fry coming back to town right. kind of thing. And then That'll they finish up at Van Wert, you know, so... They, they don't have uh, gimmies left. They got a few challenges, but certainly they're in the driver's seat. So I mentioned that Wapakoneta is ranked second in Region 10. You know who region, or who's first in that region? No. Trotwood Madison. Oh. Remember that yeah, last year? Bad. Yeah, four <laughs> overtimes with Wapak. Yeah. So maybe another regional there final coming our way. That'd be that okay. Way. We'll see. A lot of football left to be played, of course. He lied over Shawnee 35 0. We got Coach Carpenter returning this week, so mm -hmm. the Bulldogs look good in his absence. And then OG over Kenton 24 14. Titans are number one in Region 12. Yeah, yeah we talked beforehand, they're kind of, it's the quiet campaign up there yeah. in Ottawa. You know, they're pretty good, but nobody's given them a lot of credit yet. And I think Ken Schreiner likes that position because he'll just go out and surprise people. Under the radar, mm -hmm. and then. Make your noise in the postseason. That's right. Yeah. In the NWC, a couple more good ones as usual. I mean, this league is just so fun to watch week in and week out. Yeah. Crestview yeah. and Allen East played a game to double overtime. Knights mm -hmm. getting the big win on the road, 32-26. Yeah, and they were down 20-6 late in the third, so that's a great comeback win for them. They've struggled early. They lost a lot of guys from the last couple of years, but, you know, they got Grandstaff and Miller both went over 100 yards rushing. Anytime you get two guys over 100, you're pretty tough to stop. Allen East had converted a fourth and four for a touchdown in overtime of that game. Then Crestview blocked the extra point to extend the game. Yeah. And then Dylan Grandstaff got that run. So the Knights are seventh in Region 24. And that leads us to Spencerville. Yeah. And Spencerville. They're pretty good. Team to beat in the <laughs> NWC, would you say? Or does that yeah, belong to Jefferson? I think, and it's I, tough well, to say. I think Jefferson des deserves a little more credit than what we're giving them, too, because of that fairly lopsided loss to Coldwater, who now we see may be one of the best teams Certainly one of the best teams around and in the state. But uh, Spencerville averaging just under 46 a game is our number one offense in this area. Uh, and they went over 400 yards rushing again. And Goki just continues to roll up the numbers. My goodness, almost 300 yards rushing and six touchdowns. Uh, that's a season for a lot of guys. And this kid has it in one game and then goes over and makes a bunch of tackles on defense and does everything else. So, yeah, Spencerville is very, very good. Jefferson got a good win against Grove. Uh, it's going to come down to those two teams, no doubt about it. Bearcats are fourth in Region 22, Jefferson sixth in Region 22. That Region 22 is very competitive. Yeah. It also includes Marion Local. And Grove now is 10th in Region 20, also in 
D6. So some teams, a little work to do to get into the mm -hmm. postseason. Other teams control their own destiny, trying to hang on. Jay Stockwell threw for three touchdowns in that yeah, win for Binkley Jefferson. has 102 yards. So, yeah. you know, if, uh, anytime you got the run pass mix, that's a pretty good deal going Absolutely. for you. Absolutely. And then just of course, they'd like to run it more and more and more. That's that's Coach Summer's deal. Right. Control the clock. And when they play Spencerville Week 10, I expect to see a lot of that. Lots of runs. And just to put a bow on Goki's night. He was very quick to praise his offensive line mm -hmm. again. So is Zerby. So I think they've got yeah. something going there up with the guys up front. Very, very humble guys. It, it starts with the coach, trickles down to the to the players. And when your star players talking like that, you know you've you've got the message across to your guys. Rounding out the Northwest Conference, Ada over Paulding, 44 to nothing. A slow start in this one. No first down. I was there for the first quarter of this game, and there mm -hmm. was one first down <laughs> by Paulding. It came on the last play of the first quarter. So the team's feeling each other out a bit. Good yeah. defense early on. Then Ada got to the scoreboard, 44 to nothing. They're now third in Region 26, yep. D7. And according to Joe Itell on the website, they control their own playoff destiny. So that's yeah. a good position to be in. Yeah. Five and two, they're having a nice year. And battling through injuries and mm -hmm. to Connolly and everything. In the Blanchard Valley Conference, Corey Rawson has now won three in a row, 17-14 over Good North Baltimore. You yeah. know, a lot of times you can, you know, sack the bats a little bit if you're having a bad year, but not those guys. And you got to credit the coaches for keeping them, keeping them going. And the seniors, there's some leadership coming from within that locker room. To win three in a row is a really good thing for Corey Ross. Mason Warnemout, definitely one of the leaders on that team, the track star. Last week, forgot to mention this, I mean, this is inexcusable on our part. He scored six touchdowns last week, yeah. not, not this 317 right. yards. Yeah, I'm talking two weeks ago now. Yeah, yeah and then. In then, one game. Right, it's insane. Yeah, it's, it has to be mentioned, even if yeah, it's a week it late. And then this week, the win over North Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And then. Could run out of steam here because they, they do have McComb this week. McComb's very good. Yeah. You know, we saw that when they beat Hopewell Loudon, and yeah. they didn't just beat them. It was 49 nothing when Hopewell was at the top of the other division. So McComb, very, very good. Of course, they got Liberty Benton coming down the road. Yeah, you were looking at that game last week saying, you know, we got the two leaders in the two divisions of the BBC. Mm. McComb let everybody know who the better division is, yeah. I think. Yeah, With without a doubt, one division's a lot better than the other. So that interdivision showdown goes to the Panthers. They're second in Region 24. Division mm -hmm. 7. Arlington, Liberty Benton, and Van Buren all picked up wins. Do any of these teams have a chance at making a run? Do, do you see something in them that maybe they can turn it up? What I've seen out of the BBC is last year it was so strong, and this year it's not quite as strong, but that doesn't mean that they can make some good runs when it gets to the postseason. Liberty Benton's getting healthy. They've been there before. Van Buren is starting to believe again now. Yeah, they've After won, some tough what losses have they won, three against in a good row? teams. Yeah. Yeah. Early in the season, now they're on a roll. They're in first place in that division now. They can win that. They can slide into the playoffs. Who knows? Yeah, the divisional races will be interesting because LB is 3-0 and in the Blanchard while Macomb is just 2-0. and mm -hmm. Again, you know you only get credit for teams that in you play in games, your division, yeah. right? Van Buren's 3-0 and in the Valley. Hopewell out in 2-0. and so we'll see how that all plays out. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Macomb at the top of the Blanchard and Van Buren pretty good. at the top of the Valley. Yeah. yeah. In the NWCC, a little more of a shakeup now. Riverside defeats USV 35 to 8, so there are no more unbeatens in league play. Mm -hmm. Yep, four of them tied at three and one. Right. So these next few weeks are going to be a lot of fun. And you know, you got to give a credit to Lehman Catholic and Fort Loramie. They started off really bad, and now they're catching their rhythm a little bit, maybe getting healthy, maybe getting a little more experience. And you know, they've got the, the tradition to know how to win down the stretch. So they'll be tough. Of course, USV and Riverside. Uh, that was a good game, uh, well, a big game, and a big win by Riverside last week. Yes. And Fort Army has won three in a row, as you mentioned, 55 nothing victory over Ridgemont. Army's 10th in Region 26, so still a little work to do to get in. Perry shuts out Waynesfield Goshen 30 to nothing. Big win for Perry. And then you mentioned Layman's playing well. They beat Harden Northern 49-13. The Cavs are 6th in Region 26, Division 7, so they would make the playoffs if yeah. they started today. And I'm sure they're focused on that league title like the other four teams, Riverside, USV, Layman, and Warmie, yeah. all 3-1. and one. Comes down to it. It, it. That's the way it should be, right? That's absolutely. Right. So we'll, we're getting closer to crowning some league champs as we make our way towards week 10, we're up to week eight now, Mark. Uh -huh. And what are you looking at this week? Well, I think there's some really good ones. Fort Recovery and Marion Local. You know, they're both four and one in the league and, and one of them's gonna get knocked out. You know, if anybody can beat Coldwater, not sure they can. Lima Senior and St. John's, you know, that, that has huge playoff and track implications. Uh, Wapak and OG. I mean, OG has to think if we can beat Wapak, we can win the league. And then uh, the Lehman Lorem again, I think it's gonna, show which one of those is ready to come back and which one just had a, a good mid-season run. 
Absolutely. There's a mm -hmm. bunch both of good three and one. Both at three and one. Yep. There's a bunch of good games in in all the leagues, mm -hmm. and our rebroadcast schedule does a good job of highlighting some of those for you. So let's take a look at what you can see when. We started off Friday at 11 p.m. WTLW right after the sports report with Defiance versus St. Mary's. Rough Riders are looking to come back from a couple of losses. Friday at 11 p.m. Jefferson versus Crestview. That one will be on WOSN. Good one in the NWC, especially with those Knights coming off that win last week against Allen East. Saturday doubleheader begins at 7 with St. John's Lima Senior. As you just said, that's the big one in the track. And follow that up at 9 with Wapak OG. Another Big game in the WBL, and Wapak will be tested teams. again. And league title implications on the line, so everything you could ask be for. a great weekend. We've got, yep. yep. Well, thank you very much, Mark. Great job, as always, and thank you for joining us here on Mark's Madness. We'll be right back next week to break it all down for you.